we are here with Minister Schlechtova, who is the Minister of Regional Development for the Czech Republic. Minister Schlechtova, I'm curious to know a little bit more about the Czech Republic's commitments to the new urban agenda. Hello, the Czech Republic is very much committed. Uh, even my country organized uh, so-called European Habitat, but uh, it's no, it was not only for European countries, it was for 56 countries, uh, the countries in the North Pole of the whole world. And uh, so even that, that we organized that, shows that my country, my government, even my president is very keen and committed to the urban agenda. And how I think is that what we are doing here at Habitat 3 in Ecuador, in Quito, is that we are kind of settling the strategy for next years. Because the document, New Urban Agenda, it's a strategic document. And now all of us, 193 states of the UN, we need some implementing acts. And uh, I did offer, even in my speech of the national settlement of my country, that uh, my country and other countries around the Czech Republic, Europe, can be the pilot. Because uh, I would love, I would seriously love to have some examples that we can somehow evaluate here with the UN Habitat Secretariat or with the UN itself, and then we can go on uh, like we need. Because it's not only about setting the goals. We need to now put from the paper to the actions what we agreed on for the last two years. One of the central themes of the new urban agenda is partnerships. What are some of the partnerships that might help you accomplish this? So, first partnership is the international one. That's definitely we need each other. We need every continent in the world and we need the commitments of each government. Uh, you know, uh, I am a member of the Czech government for a moment, but we have several regions, they have their local governments, and we have cities, they have their local governments. So it's national, subnational, regional, local and we need a partnership on every level. And it's only in one country. And then when I look around Europe, we need the neighbors around us. And then we need the neighbors around them. So we definitely need the countries around each other to help each other. Because if I see the problems in Europe, we have different problems than, for example, here in Latin America. I was in Colombia, I was in uh, Brazil, and it seems like that in uh, those uh, regions in Latin America, they have similar problems. But it's the same like in Europe. We have the similar problems, but different ones than to Latin America. But now, this new urban agenda document is about combining us all together. And actually, it does appeal to all the countries to help each other. And this is what I'm definitely committed to. And if I can be the voice in Europe, I'm going to do that. And I will get each country, each government to just take some actions into that. That's fantastic. How about partnerships with other stakeholders, for example, the business community? Well, business community, NGOs, non-profit organizations, other stakeholders, academic sphere, these are very important because the governments uh, or the states cannot do anything without them. We need them. And uh, they are the voices of the government as well. So we need to have partnerships with them. And I really cherish uh, even some uh, institution and specific uh, uh, institutions, even within the UN, but not even within the UN, other uh, as well on human rights, on housing itself, on uh, women, on uh, gender equality, on LGBT rights, because these are helping us to actually put it to the governments, to talk there, to express the voices. And of course, I do, well, for example, myself, I have a group of NGOs, stakeholders, academic sphere, business sphere in my own country. And we have instruments for them, how we can help them, not money-wise. I'm not giving them any money, but they see my drive and they can see that I can somehow, of course, if the government wants me to, uh, to support me. And then we can do many things all together. And our citizens are happy about it. And this is what it is about. Could you give me some examples of initiatives that you think you might be able to use to leverage movement forward on the new urban agenda? Yes, uh, so uh, first, uh, 
I am not responsible only for housing. I am responsible for uh, spatial planning. I am responsible for uh, construction bits, for public procurement, for uh, region development in the Czech Republic. It means the decentralized public administration in the Czech Republic. So it's many things all together. But of course, housing, tourism, but I'm also responsible for graveyards, for example. It's a very important ad agenda because everybody will die one day. Uh, I know it's, it's too love, but uh, I'm changing the law, for example, in the Czech Republic. What I'm already doing, based on two years' discussions within the UN Habitat, and since we organized uh, the uh, regional habitat in the Czech Republic, uh, we had many informa much information, uh, I'm changing the laws in the Czech Republic. I am, for example, adopting the construction law to have uh, not that strict conditions for building the houses for people in need. So, for example, this is a big thing already, you know, changing the law, not just to talk, talk, talk. Everybody talks, but who is doing something? So I'm changing the law, and now already I have it in a parliament, and I do have support from the government, I do have support from the stakeholders, which is good. And also, uh, last year, I changed the law on region development in the Czech Republic. And I did express it even to the Commission. And uh, the EU Commissioner, Corina Kretzo, she's um, um, the head of the DG Regional uh, Development of the EU. We are very good friends. And, uh, you know, uh, we need her. We need DG Regio in Europe because then we can combine the voices of the EU. And if I'm changing three laws because of the new urban agenda, in half a year, I'm going to ask my other ministers around the EU, what did you do? You know, but this is a question. Who's going to uh, monitor? Who's going to report to whom? And who's going to how implement the new urban agenda? So in Europe, we can take it either as a member state, but also as a members of uh, UNEC, which is a UN European Committee of Europe on housing, because there is a special level of platforms. And this is another thing. I am not a fan of building new platforms. Seriously, no, because there are so many platforms already existing. Let's use the existing one. Let's make them work and not to only blah, blah. Let's seriously take some actions into the existing ones. That's very impressive. I'd like to touch on something which is part of the new urban agenda, which is spatial planning and the value of urban planning and design. How might that be leveraged to accomplish some of these goals? You know, the most important thing is planning. We can have visions how uh, the land can look like. But uh, when I am getting the request, my ministry, not myself, but when we are getting the request for changing the special planning, it's only visions. But it's not planned and it's not well planned. So it is my ministry who is co coordinating the special planning around the country. And we are saying no, no, no. Sometimes we say even yes, but I'm very tough minister. <laughs> so uh, the planning before is very important because without that, the special planning cannot happen. But here's the thing, and it's not only my country, it's uh, many of the Central and Eastern European countries, uh, former Central and Eastern European countries. We don't like to divide the Europe, Western and uh, Central and Eastern, but still it's like that. We have the decentralized public administration. So the regions in our countries are responsible for their spatial planning. But then I come as the state and I tell them, sorry guys, you made a mistake. You didn't plan it well. And I cancel that. But what it means to the inhabitants, they cannot build anything. Because the special planning, the new plans, urban agenda, uh, houses, roads, uh, anything else, buildings, it must be coordinated as an investment policy of the state or local governments. And this is what my ministry is doing as well. And finally, we have a lot of information in the new urban agenda about cooperation between top-down and bottom-up, between all levels of government. When is it best for one level of government to lead, and when is it best to try and build some kind of balance between all the different levels? That's a tough question, I must say, but very good one. Uh, you know, uh, if we have a government who is just, for example, somehow committed to Habitat because they are members of uh, the UN, they just let it go. But if you have a government, or not even a government, but a minister, because, uh, you know, my government supports me, but the drive is <laughs> myself. <laughs> I, I do have to drive. Sometimes they think I'm crazy, even my colleagues, my ministers. But in coming years, they will see it's very important. 
So uh, the government must give some shapes, give some, uh, how to say, motivation to the cities, uh, to the inhabitants, to want them to shape their own cities. Uh, and then if we motivate them, then we can discuss with local governments and the stakeholders how the state can help, even money-wise, even regarding the law, even some strategies which must be followed and we can monitor and then in two years time when we monitor and blah 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 we can help them again so uh, it is top down and it's bottom up and we are meeting at every level I would say I need as a state I need the stakeholders here on the top they need me in the bottom because they need to know my ideas and what I'm doing there and what I can do for them and here I would say in the middle there is the government so they need to support they need to have a support of uh, some crazy minister who is serious of supporting it and then who can take it to the government who's gonna say yes to that so stakeholders partnership is very important regarding new urban agenda definitely thank you very much mm -hmm.